So today I want to spend a few minutes talking about structure. Structure came up last week when we discussed genres because genres often have regular structures. But even within deterministic structures, ordering parts within it can still be challenging. For example, scientific articles often follow the IMRAD structure. So that's introduction, methods, results, analysis, and discussion. But even within that format, writers still have to determine ordering of information within those overarching structures. So building on our sense of genre, for example, it's conventional for the genre of an academic paper in the West to have an introduction that clearly states the argument, to begin with a review of the relevant literature, and then to move into a discussion of primary analysis. But even within those conventions, you still have to figure out what paragraphs go in what order, and even think about how are sentences organized within an individual paragraph. So structure is really a term from conversations on craft, not rhetorical studies. Simply, to me, structure is the order in which parts occur. It's the order of information delivered. It's the order of sentences, of paragraphs, of frames. So this is really more of a craft talk. In the third chapter of her book, Black Noise, which my students read this quarter, hip hop theorist Trisha Rose studies sampling as an outgrowth of black orientations to sound design, which she traces back to West African musics. Defending sampling as emerging from an alternative artistic tradition, Trisha Rose quotes the producer, DJ Eric Sadler, who says this about sampling. It's like someone throwing rice at you. You have to grab every little piece and put it in the right place like a puzzle. To me, Sadler's words speak to the artistry of structure. When you're working on a project, all the information exists simultaneously in your mind. But when you deliver it to an audience, whether it's in a document, a video, a podcast, a slideshow, they experience that information one piece at a time. They read one sentence at a time. They watch one frame at a time. So crafting a good structure is about meeting your audience at square zero and inviting them into your project so that by the end of it, they share your point of view or they've seen your argument unfold. No writer or artist sits down and crafts the perfect structure the first time they start working. The way to an effective structure is through the writing process, the creative process. That's why it's so important to create time for brainstorming, drafting, peer review, and re-editing and rewriting. You need to generate your pieces first and then play with them and see where they go, often for a long time. Also, that process of writing and editing helps you figure out what your argument is, what your point is. So writing and creating is actually a process of discovery. And as you write and as you edit, you also create a more effective sense of what your goal is and what your argument is. The more you know what your own argument or goal is, the more you can build around it to try to bring your readers to those same conclusions or point of view with you. But peer review is also really important in helping you understand how others experience your work so that you can make sure that what's on the page or on the screen is having the effect that you want it to. There's no shortcut to craft. We study outstanding examples so that we can reverse engineer how they're created and try to use those lessons to design our own structures. But structure is never a Mad Libs where you can just plug and play there's always an element of artistry and craft to it. The best structures emerge organically in response to the creator's sense of what the audience needs and the creator's sense of where they want the audience to go. So off you go.